Hi everyone, I'm Blackie Wolf, and this is the video series where we walk through developing a form. In this episode, we're going to wrap up the CSS portion of development and talk about how we can make our website more suitable for mobile devices. When you inspect the page and you click on this toggle device toolbar, it allows you to switch between different types of phone formats and even some iPad, iPad Pro. But if we switch to the iPhone X, we can see that the logo is too small, the links are too small to press, it's hard to read, it's difficult. And as of right now, this is how it would look on a mobile device. Thankfully, there's a meta tag with the name viewport that you can add, which will uh, address part of this problem. And the way you add this to a site is you come into the head portion and type meta, give it a name of viewport, and then the content will be width equal device width and initial scale equals 1.0 and this is the bare minimum required to make the page actually look right on a mobile device so let's come back to the form and see what it looks like and now it looks like this pretty bad you may run into some issues with the browser not working properly um, I'm not sure what they are but one of the things you can do to overcome them is open up a new tab and just go ahead and paste it in there and inspect the page again and it should fix it I'm not sure why it's doing that but yeah you can see right now it looks somewhat better but not quite and it looks like the header is overflowing so yeah we need to fix this so one of the things we're gonna do to fix this is use what's called media queries media queries are little blocks of code you can use to specify CSS rules which should only work during certain scenarios for example we can make a rule which says when the screen width is less than uh, 576 pixels then we want the background to be black and we want the color to be white and I've completely forgot to put these in a rule hold on and this is just a block so you do actually have to specify uh, CSS rules in here like you would above okay now let's see what this does and looks like it turned the background black and if we go out of mobile mode it turns it back to normal we go back in turns it black and this messes up again for some reason okay so the first thing we're gonna do is get the wrapper and so we're gonna set the what's the width okay we gave the width of 800 pixels we're gonna set the width to auto we're gonna set the margin to zero see what that does okay and now it looks a whole lot better it's not overflowing anymore or at least it doesn't appear to be so the next thing we need to do then is figure out why this is still overflowing right here everything should have a border box set to it Okay, so it looks like that problem wasn't actually a problem and it was fake. Dead gummit. I hate it when that happens. That happens unfortunately quite a bit. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is change Okay, so now we've added some more rules in order to make this look a little bit nicer. So let's see what the other pages look like. Oh boy. Right, okay, we gotta add the tag up there too. So yeah, so let's go ahead and add this tag to all the pages we need to. Okay, so now we've kind of got this uh, going a little bit better. Next, we need to adjust these to make sure these break whenever, that they're not in line, whenever there's um, this much width. And we can do this very easily by
adding a class to that section and then okay and that looks a little bit better okay come to about about actually looks okay come to contact and we got to fix contact Okay, now we've got the contact form like that. Should be fine. So this is what it looks like at pixel two size. So it's a width of 411 pixels. Uh, what about Galaxy S5? Okay, I wonder why Trace Master is like that. Ah, okay. So then we also have to fix this. Let's see. Okay, now we come back to the same problem we had before with the overflow. But you get the idea. Just by specifying it at one width, uh, we already fixed it for a wide variety of different types of phones at least according to google chrome uh, the next size up would be ipads so that would be 768 so figure out how you can fix this for ipads or if it even needs to be fixed it does you can see the gap right here so go see how you would fix this while i also try and fix it myself Okay, and so, so we didn't actually have to do a whole lot for the iPad parts of this. Um, so let's see what it looks like. So we come back here and we refresh. Oh, right. So that's why you don't, that's why you gotta be careful when using min width. Um, so for this one, we used max width. So what would be good to cut this off at? Max width of, how about 992? So we'll set a max width of 991. Change min width to max width. And now it looks back to normal there, but when we come back here, okay, so that's the iPad Pro, so that's fine. But for the iPad, it looks like that. For the phone, it looks like that. Okay, so now we've got that working properly. So yeah, now if we go to um, Pixel 2, it looks okay, it looks more readable. We go to iPad, still looks readable. Go to iPad Pro and it actually looks like the website because it's big enough. And then we go back to the website and everything looks just normal again. So yeah, just a really simple way you can use media queries. Um, they can be very, very powerful, and you can get as detailed and specific with them as you want. It's entirely up to you. So yeah, that's it for this episode, and I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave comments, feedback, suggestions, criticisms, like whether I'm adequately explaining something or not, or if you want to see more examples of a specific technique you can do with these languages or tools. In the next episode, we'll finally get into JavaScript. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into this index file. And we are going to dynamically load all the pages because I am tired of going in between every page and changing one little thing and then having to do it for every other HTML page. So that's the first thing we're going to fix. For those of you wondering why I'm not doing a framework, I want to show people that it is entirely possible to make great tools without relying on third-party frameworks. And that it can, it can be very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated or complex. In future videos, I will rely on frameworks. And the reason is because there's so much work to do, especially if you're with a team. You want to be consistent. You want everyone to be on the same page. So that's why frameworks can be vital to the success of an application. But in this case, it's just a form. So we're just having fun with developing it from scratch. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.